Hello everyone, Seraphin here, welcome back for more Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. When I last left you guys, we had just finished up the first chapter, and we're moving on to the second one. Imagine that. This one's pretty interesting. I actually, like, the, the pace of this game is very well done, I think. Uh, they don't throw a whole ton of stuff at you all at once. It's very gradual, but it still keeps you engaged the entire time. Again, I think this is one of the best stories in the entire series. This particular game here, and the one that comes after it, because it's a sequel. And who is this? This gentleman is named Riss, or Reese. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I, I pronounce it Riss. It may be not actually that, but who knows. It's actually pronounced similarly to the old healer from the first Fire Emblem game, who conveniently is also named Riss, but with a W. <laughs> W-R-Y-S. So, I'm not sure. I pronounce it Riss, but do as you please. So Riss, unfortunately, has like some kind of uh, perpetual illness about him. As a res it's, like, it's like some kind of genetic illness that he was born with, and he's just very frail and always sick and very weak. I'm not sure how he managed to land a job as part of a mercenary company, but I guess they just needed a healer. <laughs> and that's what he is, by the way. He's a healer. He's a priest. You are our sole staff wielder. So if something happens to you, we're all going to be injured for good. It's not actually how it works, but... He apparently has a letter. Oh, his letter is for you. How nice. It's a love letter, probably. Give this to the Red Tress tonight. Interesting. Well, she certainly has red hair. That's alright. Dramatic music stop. Oh. Oh dear. Take this letter to Oscar and tell him to get ready for combat. What on earth could it have said? Well, I mean, you can read it. She gave it back to you, right? So Riss comes running into the fort here. Why are you so agitated? Oh no, Mist and Rolf have been captured by bandits. Uh, Rolf is someone you haven't seen yet, but it is actually Oscar and Boyd's little brother. He's about the same age as Mist, so the two helpless members of the company have been captured by banditos. They went out to gather flowers unsupervised? That seems a little strange. Also seems odd that a bandit would just walk up and deliver a letter instead of just demanding stuff like... We'll butcher the kids if you don't come right now. He didn't seem like a bad person. Well, as we all know, looks can be deceiving. What cowards. Yeah, bandits generally don't strike me as the upstanding moral type for a number of reasons. I'm gonna go get missed. So Titania said to stay here and wait for her, and Ike's like, uh, no, I'm not doing that. My sister's in danger. But now everybody else is like, uh, I guess if you're going, I'll go too. We're going to ignore orders and go fight to save our siblings. Which I guess is fair. I probably would do the same thing in their situation. Uh-oh. <laughs> They're just like... Yeah, you guys are like children, basically. Just, just fight all the time. It's not like you two chambermaids to be disobeying orders. That's pretty funny. Why did... Okay, this always bugged the heck out of me. You're going to the bandit stronghold. It's that way. Why is there even a bandit stronghold? Why has that not been destroyed? Like, why has the the actual, like, army of this nation not rolled in and destroyed the bandit stronghold? Or why, more, moreover, why haven't the mercenaries done it yet? I guess, thinking about it now, it's probably because if they wipe out all the bandits all at once, they wouldn't have any work left to do. <laughs> it's kind of like a self-preservation thing to keep the bandits coming. That's kind of weird if you think about it, but I guess they have to earn money somehow. And here comes some bad guys. Gotta love that. Ikanao? Is that how you pronounce that guy's name? 
Where's the red-haired wench you ride with? Uh, well, she's not here. And if she heard you call her that, she'd have messed your whole face up. If... We want the redhead and her pups. That'd be you, boys. <laughs> if you're so impatient, I guess we can start by killing you. Yeah, good luck with that, dude. And just like that, once again, a grid magically appears, as do a bunch of other people. Without the red-haired knight, they're no match for us. Yeah, okay, whatever you say, pal. Just like he said, we're going to make you regret those words, and he's not kidding about that. At any rate, so here we have Riss now. He is a healer. He's a level 4 priest. He comes with 10 magic and 14 resistance. Uh, zero strength and zero defense, though. That's an issue. And he's not altogether all that fast, either. 5 speed looks like a decent number, but it's really not. Uh, he's going to get... He's very frail, and he'll get utterly destroyed if he's in combat. So the idea is to keep him very, very far away from it. He might, on occasion, be able to take a single hit, but not more than that. And he does have a skill called Serenity, which is the exact opposite of what Boyd's Tempest does. It cuts biorhythm effects in half. And you'll see here, all he can use is healing staves. He has D rank and staves. He does come with one heal staff, which is nice, and it does heal a whopping uh, 11 health on his in or 20 health in his hands because of his incredibly high magic. Riss is very good at that. Very high magic, very high res, but that's it. Everything else is kind of meh, especially his defense and his strength. His luck's not too shabby either. At any rate, he's going to be our only healer for quite some time, so we're going to have to keep him around anyway. Here we have a Myrmidon that I'm going to put Oscar just in range of. Let him come to me. And we are going to go soften up this here axe-wielding dude. To allow Ike an easier kill. Actually, wow, uh, Boyd straight up doubles and murders this guy. I'm tempted to let him, uh, but Ike really needs the experience. So we're going to let him go here first. Oh, Ike doubles him too. Isn't that nice? Well, I guess I'll let Ike do the honors of softening this guy up first. It's probably because his strength is not high enough to outweigh that axe that he's wielding, so... Alright, that'll be a level up for Ike. Hopefully a good one. Give me strength and speed, please. There's strength and speed! That's all he got. Well, that's good. That's fine. He's catching up. That's good for... That's actually effectively a two-point speed increase, because now the Iron Sword is weighing him down less. And uh, we'll let... Whoops, I didn't quite go far enough. We'll let Boyd finish off this here guy. Just kind of cleave him in two here is the idea, I, I suspect. So, something I haven't touched on yet, and actually I'm really excited to talk a lot about this game because there's a lot of mechanics changes that are... I, I just... I'm really cool to talk to you guys about. So, one of the big ones that you noticed previously is that every character has a magic stat. Even if they're not magic wielders, kind of, you know, like Ike and Boyd and all them. And you may be wondering, well, why the heck is that the case? Uh, that is because there are some weapons that are used, are, are, rather, are based off of your magic ability as opposed to your strength. And we kind of got something of a taste of that effect in previous games, but we'll talk about that in a second. Here's Rolf, by the way. So that is Oscar and Boyd's little brother. You'll see they all have varying different shades of green hair. That's how you know they're related. And Mist is very normal looking with her just regular brown hair. It's kind of like an auburn color, I guess. So they're hiding in a little shack back there, or have been ra I'd rather have been stored there by after being kidnapped by bandits. Get at me, Myrmidon. Ike, with his reasonably good defense, takes almost nothing from that guy and then doubles him in return. Gotta love it when your level 4 guy can double Myrmidons already with 8 speed. And that guy's not quite far enough, or close enough, rather, to get to us, so he's in for a world of hurt in a second here. And then Oscar just stabs this guy thusly, and he'll, he's gonna get a level up from killing him, too. That'll be nice. More fighters. And so this is actually, this chapter is actually, I think, easier than the last one, simply because your guys have had a chance to get a level up or two, and at this point, they're just beating the ever living snot out of everything. Uh, not quite fast enough to one-shot that guy, or strong enough, rather. Can I do with this guy? Not quite, either. So I think we will let Ike soften this bigger guy up first. 
since it's unlikely he'll be getting hit. Uh, the problem with Boyd, as good as he is, he tends to have fairly lackluster defense. His, gr his growth is passable. It's like 30 or 25%, but he doesn't get defense level ups anywhere near as often as Ike does. And that's an issue because uh, he he's got really good HP, thankfully, to kind of compensate for that. But even though Boyd is definitely a frontline fighter, he's going to be taking a lot of damage. And his speed actually often is not enough for him to dodge either. So he'll be getting beat on quite a bit in the early game, which is unfortunate. But thankfully, uh, you got usually have a healer run to help him out in that regard. But uh, let's have Oscar finish off this Myrmidon here. And because of the way that uh, moving again on mounted units works in this game, he'll sh he should be able to move out of the way and closer to our guys after defeating this guy. Which is incredibly valuable, by the way. Uh, pfft, not a great level up for Oscar, unfortunately. Skill usually isn't that big of an issue for him, but... Yeah, there we go. So now I can put Riss right here behind these other guys and heal him up without fear of reprisal. Get Ike topped off here. And unfortunately, uh, healers still have really slow experience growth. They only get 11 from using a healing staff. Uh, other utility staffs will give them more experience than that, but because they're so rare and difficult to get, you're not going to be able to rely on them for experience gains very often. Oh, here comes Titania. I should have known they disobey orders. They have no discipline. And here comes Titania to reinforce us. Uh, we don't need her, really, I don't think, but there she is anyway, just in case. She's still got a lot of stuff she's holding on to. I could use Riss as, like, a proto-convoy at this point, probably, if I needed to. Speaking of, let's go ahead and trade with him and dump off a couple of these swords. I guess I'll hang on to one of them, just in case. Why do I have one that's broken over the other? Oh, did I mistakenly use one over the other? That's That sucks. Oh, well. We'll just take down this guy with Ike. You level up pretty quick in the inter in the uh, opening levels of this game. People tend to level up quite quickly as a result, so. And we'll go ahead and top off Ike here real quick. Not that he needs it, but, you know, gotta get keep experience points gains going on my healer here. There's only a few guys left. Uh, ooh, this guy's got a Steel Axe, and he does drop it, too. That's nice. I guess I can give one of them back to Titania. This guy's got a speed wing. Excellent. I don't need to use that right away, but it'll be nice to have when I do need it, because in in invariably someone's going to have speed problems. It always does happen in this game, unfortunately. Thankfully, it's not Ike, usually, but it very often is Boyd, and I don't know why that is, but that's just the way of it. Let's get a little closer here. I don't want Ike engaged directly with them, because he'll get messed up a little bit. You can see Titania can talk with Ike here. Keep your mind on the battle. Good words. Good advice. Definitely don't lose track of what you're doing. This guy decides to come out by himself just to get slaughtered, I presume. I'm going to assume that's his reasoning for stepping out here by himself. And Ike will make fairly quick work of him. You won't kill him, but it'll come darn close. Ow, would you stop hitting me with weapon triangle disadvantage? Especially with a steel axe of all things. Like, give me a break. Uh, we'll have Boyd finish him off. Wow, oh, jeez, man. He's actually doing pretty good right now. He should get another level up out of this, too. He's only one experience point off, I think. If I remember correctly. Yep, that'll do it. That's another level up for Boyd. Let me strength and speed. Strength, speed, skill, luck. Wow, nice. That's a great level for him. So one more strength and he will no longer be slowed down by his iron axe at all. And I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, we'll get Riss moved up here to heal Ike. And I'm going to need to relieve Boyd of one of those steel axes probably. He doesn't need both of them. I can give one back to Titania, I suppose. Speaking of. Nah, she's got room still. So I'll just park her right behind Boyd here. And take one of those steel axes back. 
And then we'll park Oscar right here outside of the Axe Guy's range. So you'll see there, I don't know if you look, if you look close enough, you can see these little glowy hedges there. Little glowy bushes. Oh, we'll talk about those in a second, once this combat is over. Oh, Snapple. That would have been great. Always fun watching fighters double hit like that. This Myrmidon thinks he's clever. So here you'll see regular old thickets. These do give you a void and defense, much like uh, forests did in the old in the other games previously to this. This one is the same thing, but it is a heal hedge, as you can see there. And this does the same thing as regular thickets, but it also does re uh, restore a small amount of hit points at the beginning of your turn, if you're occupying it. It's like, I think, 10% of your max hit points or something. It's not a lot, but it's it's nice. It's nice to have. It lets you uh, maintain a little bit, slightly more longevity than you otherwise would be able to. So Oscar is... he just leveled up a little bit ago, but we're going to let him take a poke at more Myrmidons, as he is wont to do. He's also quite good at it. Nice! Sadly, that... Uh, that noise of not inflicting any damage isn't quite as satisfying as it was in previous generations, but it's still really fun to hear. Alright, let's take this guy down with one swing here. It would have been one round if I'd hit him last time, but that's okay. You can't have everything you want, I suppose. I'm trying to, debating who I want to get this level up to from the boss, actually. Uh, Ike's... Oh, Ike doesn't need it. He'll get a level from killing this guy. So we can let Boyd have the boss kill yet again. Maybe Oscar can even help him soften him up a little bit. He's got a... What does he have, a hand axe or a steel axe or something, I think? I really should pay better attention to what I'm looking at here in terms of enemy abilities and weapons and whatnot. It tends to get me in trouble quite a bit. More strength, luck, defense, nice. So Ike is no longer slowed down by his iron sword at all. He now has enough strength to counter the weight. The Steel Sword does still weigh him down by 5 points, so he's not doubling with that just yet, but uh, he's looking pretty good. I would prefer him to be a little bit faster at level 5, considering he's only gotten, what, 1 or 2 points of speed? So, that's okay. He's still doing really good. Boyd's doing exceptionally good right now, and I'm very happy with how he's turning out so far. I'm hoping that con that trend continues. I'll heal up Boyd here real quick, and then I'm going to park Titania in the way so this boss, if he moves, I don't think he does, but just in case he does, doesn't go for my undefended healer and end up one-shotting him. Oh, boss does move. Okay, he's going for Boyd. Well, bad news bears for him, I guess. Well, you say that. Ow. Wow, Boyd missed? You kidding me? What's the hit rate on this guy? Does he have a lot of avoid or something? I don't think he does. 78 I missed on, and he hit on 70. Awesome. Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, I suppose. Well, we'll finish this guy up real quick, and I'm sure if I just gang up on him with all three of them, he's not gonna he's gonna go down pretty quick. Let's see if Oscar does anything to him. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I'll lay into it with Oscar first to soften him up. And as I mentioned, I think we're gonna let Boyd have the kill here. Assuming he's capable of hitting him. Which, again, I don't think he should have any issue with, but... Let's see what Ike does to him. I think Ike will double him. Oh yeah, for sure. So as long as Ike doesn't crit, we're in good shape. But if he does, then we got a problem. Well, we don't have a problem. The guy will still die, but... If you can beat me, you can have the kids. Well, fan fantastic. As I pummel the snot out of you. I almost feel bad for this guy. Not really, but... Alright, so Boyd, please land your 73 hit here. Nice. Down he goes. Now, there is no seize requirement in this chapter. It's simply beat the boss, so that is the end of Chapter 2 already. And that'll be a leather level up for Boyd. He got magic and resistance. <laughs> Uh, well, that's not what you prefer to see on that situation, but I guess I'll deal with it. So, what I was saying earlier, by the way, I totally forgot. Um, there are some weapons in this game that are based off of your magic as opposed to your strength, and actually target the opponent's resistance instead of their defense. And there is one weapon of every type for that, except bow and arrow, I don't think there's one of those for that. But there is a wind-based sword, there is a thunder-based axe, and there is a fire-based lance to get in this game. And they all are based off your magic. 
what you did was disobey orders. Oh, fun. And Oscar's like, no, it was my it was my responsibility. I'm the one at fault. And then they all do the same thing. They're all like, no, it was me. It's my fault. Let's go find the kidlings. Uh-oh, we missed one, somehow. Well, yeah, of course we did. You don't need to worry, we'll get you out of there. Well, so, so to speak, I guess. Shut your stinking trap. Oh, you're asking for it now. If you don't, I'll start with the girl. Yikes. Titania's like, okay, I'm going to put down my guns. In her case, it basically is a gun. It's like a freaking shotgun. I like how you can hear the sounds of them dropping their weapons on the ground, too. It's pretty cool. All you can do now is watch while I gut this little brat like a fatling pig. That's horrifying. What was that? He's fainted is all. So that guy was about ready to murder a kid. That's uh, that's really horrifying, actually. But thankfully, some strange occurrence just happened and saved him at the last second. And we'll find out what that strange occurrence was momentarily, I think. This guy's dead. This arrow. Oh, he got shot in the face. Doesn't sound very pleasant. Single arrow between the eyes? Who else can make a shot like that? No one, that's who. Well, then who was it? Is your name no one? And here we have the aforementioned Shinon and Gatri. The two guys you haven't met yet, but now you have, because here they are. So the archer here is Shinon. He is very proud of himself and very, uh, let's just say he knows how good he is at what he does. The other guy here is Gatry. He is decked out in heavy armor. Shinon and Gatry are awesome. I like both of them. I mean, Shinon's a bit of a smug jerkwad, but I mean, let's be honest. When you're that arrogant and that good at what you do, you're bound to have some kind of complex. In the end, I got to feather someone. Love it. All I did was sweat. Poor Gatry. Mist plays off as being this really strong, you know, brave character, but... I mean, I guess she really is in a certain respect. You don't see her, like, whining and crying at all, really. She's in very atypical in that regard for, like, a... 13 year 14 year old girl but <laughs> what a day this has been yeah that's fair enough I'll agree to that okay so that was chapter 2 a form <laughs> previously known as rescue and we'll be moving on to chapter 3 next time imagine that so thank you all very much for watching up to this point I really do appreciate it uh, we're just getting started and there's a long way to go but I'm really excited to get into it hoping you guys all are too so stick around for the next episode and until that time, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.